We all appreciate and love our dogs, but none more so than those who have service dogs. Today on the show, we are getting into the Christmas spirit by sharing the story of a blind woman who showed her adoration for her service animal by writing a beautiful Christmas poem. We perform that today. Hello, I'm James Jacobson in Maui, Hawaii. And I'm Claire Mansell in London, England. Welcome to Dog Edition. Where voices from around the world consider all things dog. Dog Edition is the first show designed for you to listen to while you walk your dogs. Today on the show, a Christmas celebration here at Dog Edition. We talk to poet and disability advocate Janine Stanley. And get ready to hear Twas the Night Before Christmas like you've never heard it before. So if you love dogs as much as we do, pause what you're doing, leash up your pup, and let's go for a walk, because we've got a lot to talk about on today's episode of Dog Edition. Hey Pepper, want to go for a walk? Claire, it is Christmas time, and we are all gathered with our loved ones, especially our four-legged dogs, and we love them. I have a new one who is visiting, I'm going to say visiting our home. We are fostering this little dog named Chloe. She is in a red and green collar, and if you've watched any of our Dog Podcast Network lives, where Claire and I tell you about all the things that are happening at DPN, you can see her. We'll put a link to an old one in the episode where you can see this little dog. She's a bundle of joy. But having dogs at Christmas makes it more Christmassy, right? Absolutely. You have to have your dog there over the Christmas period. It's vital. And I think also what we have to remember is that dogs are really important company for a lot of people. They really help with people's mental health. They're very important companions and support to a lot of people. And of course, especially to people who have them as service dogs. That is so true. Our first guest today on Dog Edition is Janine Stanley. She is our only guest, and you will hear why she is so important. She didn't always want a dog. And in fact, it took a long time for her to accept that she needed one. As a kid, I've always been legally blind, but I had a lot more vision as a kid, so I kind of passed for not very well sighted in my small town. But I always thought about getting a guide dog because I kind of knew, you know, yeah, you're legally blind, but I always thought they were for people who were totally blind, which is absolutely not true. But I didn't know that at the time. And so, you know, I went through all of my adult blindness rehabilitation thinking, oh, you know, I'll get a dog sometime. Janine is one of many legally blind people who have a service dog. And we've talked about service dogs a lot on this show, including ones who haven't quite made the grade and have gone on to very different, fulfilling careers. (laughs) That's right. Sometimes they don't turn out to be the best guide dogs and they have these really cool career changes and we've covered that. But a lot of people who have guide dogs realize that this is an incredibly important bond because they basically help create the world in a way that the blind person can see. These service animals are really, really important. And it's never more important than when you move to a new community. Here's Janine. I moved from this little town out to the big city of Columbus, Ohio, and I realized I suck with a cane. I'm terrible at it. And so I looked into getting a dog, and I was able to do that. And that was, let's see, 1987. So what, to 35 years ago? Wow, that's a little scary. And I was instantly hooked. It was like, oh. This is fantastic, you know. And so I've had, I'm on my ninth dog now. And I actually got to work for a guide dog school. And although service dogs are incredibly helpful, it takes a lot of money and time to train one. And there is quite often a big backlog of demand for people who want them and they just can't fulfill it. So when Janine received her guide dog, it was a momentous occasion. And then she went on to work for a school that trained these service dogs. And she was able to witness on many occasions someone getting their dog for the first time. It's just fun watching people discover what I discovered way back when, which was your independence, your autonomy. And you've got a dog. Come on. I mean, (laughs) in fact, 
I think there's probably only one thing that's more life changing than getting your guide dog, which is meeting your life partner. And it turns out that for Janine, the two were actually related. I actually met my husband when I was volunteering for the guide dog school at a convention, and he had a dog from the same school. And we were like two of three people in the state who had guide dogs from the school. And we met and we talked to each other and he called me up a week later and uh, we just celebrated our 25th anniversary. So yeah, we once won a contest for people who look like their dogs, which is frightening. But we, we have both had golden retrievers. He's only had goldens. I had during that time a, a lab golden cross and a lab reducal. I don't think it would be so bad to be thought of as looking like a golden retriever. I mean, they are constantly happy and really beautiful. Of course, they can't really see so well. I mean, the people. So, yeah, that, that, it's like you'll have to take my word for it. You look like a golden retriever. I think that is a beautiful love story. So it is a love story that involves, you know, finding the love of your life 25 years and it's connected with the dogs. That's the type of thing that we do here at Dog Podcast Network. Find these beautiful love stories. So, of course, the whole reason we're talking about Janine on this show is because we came across this fantastic poem that she wrote about dogs at Christmas. And so we called her up because we wanted to find out her story and to find out how that poem came about. It's really funny because that poem, along with several others, was written, oh my gosh, 20 years ago, probably. There used to be an email list that was for guide dog handlers, and it was called the Buddy List, after the first guide dog, Buddy. And every year, I would write a holiday poem for that list. So today on the show, we are going to bring one of those poems to life. And it's one of my favorite poems of all times. It was Twas the Night Before Christmas, but this is a version like you've never heard before. So please grab a cup of cocoa, grab your pup. And listen to Janine Stanley's version of Twas the Night Before Christmas. Twas the night before Christmas, and the kennels were still, with most dogs now asleep, having eaten their fill. The Labradors sprawled out quite snug in their beds, while visions of anything edible danced in their heads. And the Goldens and Shepherds curled up on the floor, some twitched in their sleep, and some even did snore. The dog food was stacked in the feed room with care, in hopes that a trainer soon would be there. On the window ledge, one of the kennel cats lay, surveying the lawn at the end of his day. Something was different, that little cat knew. Tonight, something would happen, it had to be true. For that day, as the workers had left to go home, they'd wished Merry Christmas before starting to roam. The dogs had noticed it too, during this past week's walks. The trainers seemed just that much happier and eager to talk. The cat was almost asleep when he first heard the sound. A whoosh through the air and a jingle around. It reminded him of a dog's collar when the animal shook, but this sound kept on growing. He'd better go look. From the ceiling there came a faint sort of thunk as the kennel cat climbed to the highest pile of junk. Once before, people had worked on the roof and come down through the trapdoor to a chorus of woof. But the dogs still were quiet, all sleeping so sound, as this man dressed in red made his way right on down. He patted the cat as he climbed past his spot, then made his way right to the trainer's coffee pot. A shepherd sat up, not fully awake. Then a golden followed her with a mighty loud shake. 
That did it. All the dogs sprang to life with loud noise. In spite of the din, the old man kept his poise. He filled the pot full and started to brew. Then he pulled up a chair and took in the view. Dogs all around him so carefully bred. He knew well their jobs, the blind people they led. You all may not know me, but I'm Santa Claus. The old man smiled and took a short pause. When he filled up his mug with hot liquid and cream. I've always wanted to stop here. It's been one of my dreams. I didn't bring you presents or bones just to chew. I'll tell you something better what you're going to do. You all will work hard and the trainers will share both praise and correction, gentle and fair. You'll go lots of places and face big scary things. You'll ride buses and subways and hear fire sirens ring. Cars will drive at you, but you'll stand strong, not moving into danger, not moving toward wrong. And then just when you think that this trainer's the best, the kindest, the funnest person, toss away all the rest. That trainer will begin to ignore you and give you away, handing your leash over despite your dismay. Now the person who pets you and feeds you will be a blind person. That's a person who can't see. This man or this woman may see just a tad, but their view's missing parts or the focus is bad. So you, well-trained dogs, will act as their eyes. You'll work as a team and discover the size of this great world we live in because you will go a million new places with this person you know. Your master will love you and treat you with care. In return, your training and trust will always be there. After the last dog has been petted and soothed, Santa put away the coffee pot and made ready to move. Up the ladder he rose, to the door high above, with a smile and a wave as he slipped on his gloves. And all the dog ears were pricked as he disappeared out of sight. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, speaking of the seasonal mood, uh, some voices from all the people here at Dog Podcast Network who help make Dog Edition possible. Stick around. And now, a message from your dog. Every day with you is like a day at the beach, and I want as many beach days as possible. I want to run and sniff and find a good stick to carry. I want to walk with you, run with you, sleep with you, eat with you. And when I eat with you, I want Everpup. It infuses any food you give me with health and life and vibrancy. I can feel it. It's a strange thing to do, sprinkle this powder on my food, but I wouldn't have it any other way. My time with you is precious and irreplaceable, and I'm thrilled to be with you for as long as possible. Here's to puppy playtime and senior snoozes. (laughs) No matter how old I get, I want my ever pup. It just makes me feel good in this life and the next, and the next, and the next. I am so grateful to be your dog and for the ever pup you give me. So now that you know what your dog wants, get Everpup, the ultimate dog supplement. Everpup is available in select pet shops and on Amazon. But to get the best price possible, join the Everpup Club at everpupclub.com, where you'll get your first jar for just $8 with free shipping anywhere in the U.S. Go to everpupclub.com and use the discount code DPN. That is everpupclub.com. Everpup every day. Welcome back to Dog Edition. We want to celebrate some of the people who help make Dog Edition and some of the shows at Dog Podcast Network possible, and that is our amazing team. We call it Team Dog. That's right. We have a brilliant group of people here from all over the world, and so we asked them a series of Christmas questions, and here are some of their responses. Christmas is coming. I know that it's Christmas when... I start seeing Christmas decorations and lights outside people's homes. When I start 
singing Christmas carols, which is usually in August. It's always the right time of year for Christmas songs. When all the shops start playing jingle bells on the 1st of December, and you just feel really bad for the shop attendants because you know you've been listening to that all day long. What breed would Rudolph be? The Rudolph, in my imagination, is like a golden retriever, I think. Jack Russell Terrier mix. The reason is because people count Jack Russells out. What am I getting my dog for Christmas? Oh, am I a terrible dog owner because I haven't thought about this? The dogs also get presents, but they don't really wrap those. I don't have a dog at Christmas time, which means that we're really a little um, sad in our house. So what I'm hoping is that I'll get a dog for Christmas, and then I can get that dog a home, our home for Christmas. When does the tree and the lights finally come down in our home? Traditionally in my family, the tree starts coming down, I'd say about a week after Christmas. The tree and the lights come down in my home pretty quickly after the new year. I like to have everything up for New Year's Eve because it's still so festive and lovely. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. We are so grateful for all the people here at Team Dog who make the show possible. We have people from all over the world because there are dog lovers everywhere. And so I want to thank you for joining us today. That is all we have time for on today's episode, but we'll be back next year. And to make sure that you always know when we've released a new episode, then make sure you follow along in your favorite podcast app and spread the joy over the festive season by telling a friend about our podcast and the podcast network as well, which includes a range of shows, including The Long Leash with James Jacobson. Nothing says Merry Christmas more than telling people about DPN. That's all we ask for for Christmas. Please tell folks about DPN. I'm Claire Mansell. And I'm James Jacobson in Maui, Hawaii. Thank you so much for being with us and making this a wonderful year. On behalf of all of us at Dog Podcast Network, I'd like to wish you and your dog a very warm aloha and happy new year.